Um, the little talk I'm giving tonight uh, is about these fantastic things. Uh, not wheels, but motorcycles in general. Uh, I'm creative director for uh, Speed Tractor Industries here in Tokyo uh, and part of a kind of a global movement for, I call it alternate custom motorcycle design. I'll kick off tonight by backtracking to the late 60s and early 70s and this is what motorcycles were back then. They were approachable, uh, kind of human in scale and most importantly <coughs> there wasn't a lot of barriers to putting yourself in the picture. It, uh, it wasn't a far cry to, for you to be the person sitting on that bike hooning down the road with the sun on your back. But fast forward three or four decades and motorcycle design and motorcycling has that's awesome, sorry to draw attention to that gentleman there. That's just freaked me out. Anyway, fast forward and this is the kind of thing that is the first experience that most people have when they're looking at motorcycling and it's not a, a kind of an easy to do thing, it's this circus spectacle now and I could forgive anyone for not wanting to be this guy the wrong way up on a motorcycle in mid-air, it's extreme. And, and as a result you've kind of got motorcycles which are extreme, it being portrayed in marketing as extreme, and so new riders are tailing off. But one of the good things that's come out of all this rapid forward movement is this wealth of well-engineered parts. And it's kind of like a global resource now that allows people like myself to do what we do. And uh, we're not really anything special. We're not the classic automotive designer. We're um, creative you know, kind of people, we're graphic designers, product designers, architects. Uh, I even know IT guys and marketing men that have pursued the career that they had to go about forging two-wheeled dreams for others. And I guess that's probably the biggest difference between us and the mainstream manufacturers. The advantage we have is that we're designing for a target audience of one which means that we don't have to worry about the lowest common denominator of 50,000 units or value engineering. The materials we can use, the finishes, the design itself is much more in context to an individual. So it's more like an architectural model, if you would, or a bespoke suit. The upside of that is that when a client chooses to work with us on creating their dream, they're sidestepping the value system that the mainstream manufacturers are putting upon them. So the bikes that we're building don't devalue this year to the next. We don't have to make last year's model worth less than this year's in the eyes of the owners. We're not trying to get them to buy another one. It's there for, uh, for good. And this is a fantastic machine. This one's actually by Lucky Cat Garage. And this has got parts from 1950s motorcycles all the way through to 1990s motorcycles. And it's an example of the follies that we're also afforded. We can kind of reanimate racer spirits from the past, something that a, a mainstream manufacturer could never really do. This is called Gorilla Punch. Um, by a, uh, a group of designers in Northern Europe, and they set themselves the challenge of repenning the iconic uh, Honda CB754 from the 70s, and did a fantastic job. The materials, you know, brushed out aluminium, sandblasted stainless. <clears throat> but wherever you're getting that kind of minimalism, you get the flip side of it. This is a group called El Solitario, and they do these, uh, I call them apocalypse bikes. And I always look at this and go, this is awesome, because, you know, like, if you couldn't decide which headlight to go with, just fit all three and run with it. <laughs> um, but I really admire what these guys do. They're kind of young punks. But one thing that it all has in common, as I mentioned before, is that it's creating a worth that's completely that of the owner. The motorcycles that they're created from, the parts that they're created from, a lot of the time you couldn't even give them away if you wanted to, although they are getting more popular now, unfortunately. But the value is, is in the design itself. And it goes back to that old adage of the, the sum being greater than that of the, the parts, and it's no more true than with these machines. This is the 20 seconds feels like a long time, trust me, when you're up here. <laughs> This is, 
This is actually a shot from here in Japan. It's one of the few beaches, in fact, the only beach you can ride a motorcycle up and down without being chased by the police. Um, if you want to ever come over and ride with us, it's uh, over in Notohanto. But it goes back to that thing of the, the machine being a bespoke creation for the individual. And doing this today and doing this next year or the year after doesn't ever get cheapened or devalued. We also get to sidestep those kind of marketing genres of surfing's over there and motorcycles are over here and this is an Australian company. And their motto is it's all the same juice. And so you'd never see a mainstream manufacturer being able to achieve something like this. I personally probably wouldn't ride it in the wind, but anyway. Um, <laughs> some of us are simply setting out to realise the original designer's intent before it was value engineered into mass manufacture. This is Cafe Machine uh, producing a beautiful Motoguchi. Uh, and for them, it's just that attention to detail. The mainstream manufacturers haven't all been kept caught napping with this. Uh, BMW and Yamaha have actually commissioned some of the, uh, the kind of up and coming builder houses. This is a um, concept for the R90 for BMW penned by Roland Sands Design. So it's nice to see that kind of cross pollination happening. This is one of ours and it's almost the end of the, my spiel tonight. Uh, the Catalina Special by Speed Tractor, when we stepped into the design space for this, <clears throat> the goal was simply to create the essence of bike. What my four-year-old daughter and my 90-year-old grandfather would probably both draw if I gave them a pen and said, what's a motorcycle? And last but not least, if any of this tonight has invoked any kind of emotion in you at all, go out and get on a bike because you're gonna have experiences and meet people in inventive new ways that you haven't had before. And in this kind of digitally saturated age, to do something that doesn't need you know, a social media expose to validate is, uh, is pretty unique. Thanks very much for listening. Matthew, thank you very much indeed.